Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm now controlling four digital potentiometers with the Arduino and they're going, I'm going to vary their resistance and that's going to vary the voltage on the anode of these four LEDs and the brightness will step up and then it will step down. So let me turn this on. I don't know why there's an initial pulse like that. But um, you can see here the brightness of these four LEDs gradually increases and then decreases. Now, <clears throat> these two outside LEDs, uh, I think it's just, it might be that the LEDs uh, on voltage is a little bit lower than the two inside LEDs, or it could be an example of how inaccurate uh, these resistance, digital resistance values are. It could be that these chips are just uh, different and you'd have to uh, cherry pick maybe these uh, current limiting resistors to try to get these two evenly uh, illuminate up and down at the same brightness levels. So because we have two chips we're going to have two slave select or chip select lines and depending on which one is low uh, that's the particular chip we'll be able to uh, write data to and of course each each chip has two potentiometers so each uh, chip has to have the correct address to address and control uh, each individual potentiometer and of course since there's only two one has an address of zero and one has an address of one so let's take a look at the sketch so this code here comes from Jeremy Blum's book very good book on learning about Arduino. I've been going through the examples. And uh, I learned that the Arduino IDE actually comes with the SPI library in the IDE, so you don't have to download this um, SPI library. So you start off by including the SPI library with include spi.h. That gives you all the uh, resources from the SPI library. And uh, with the UNO, uh, there is a default where you use pin 11 for the MOSI, or the serial data in, and you use pin 12 for the MISO, or serial data out, and pin 13 is used for the clock, the serial clock. And here we're setting up the pins for the uh, slave or chip select. So we have uh, SS1 is pin 10 and SS2 will be pin 9. Now once we select chip 1 or chip 2, we then have to address uh, digital part 0 or digital part 1. And we do that by declaring this uh, register 0 and register 1 and we assign it this uh, binary number and the one will address uh, digital potentiometer one and the zero here will address digital potentiometer two so depending on which one of these uh, you're using you then have access to control that potentiometer so here using pin mode now we say that chip select one is an output and using pin mode, we're declaring that uh, SS2, chip select 2, is also an output. So these will output either the, uh, they're active low, so the zero will turn on that particular chip, so then you can address one of those two potentiometers at a time. So now we initialize an instance of the SPI library. Here we have spi.begin. So now we have to write the code to control four LEDs and we have two chips and each chip has two potentiometers so two LEDs will be associated with one chip and the other two LEDs will be associated with the second chip and then also we have to distinguish uh, each potentiometer uh, on each chip so there's the pot zero will be uh, connected to 
one LED and then part one will be connected to the second LED on that chip and then the same thing for the, uh, the second chip you've got one LED to part zero and the second LED uh, to part one. So now we have void set LED. So each LED we have a particular chip select for that LED because that LED is on a particular chip. And then we have the uh, declare an integer for the register. So we have to know which potentiometer. And then we have an integer for level. And that's the number from 0 to 128 that will control the brightness of the LED. So the chip select will digital write low, so it's an active low, that'll turn on a chip. And SPI transfer register, so we choose the register, so this enters in the code for uh, selecting the correct memory for that particular potentiometer. And then we have the SPI dot transfer level, and that transfers a binary number. Here it's an integer level, uh, an integer number from 0 to 128, but that gets converted into binary and gets both of these get shifted in as a 16 bit command, like I did with the uh, example with the Heath kit where I manually entered in that 16 bit number. And then we have a digital write chip select high which then uh, turns off or disables that chip. And now we just have a loop that is going to take integer i which is the number for the level, the LED level, and in the first instance we're going to increment it from 0 to 128 one bit at a time and while it's doing that, we're going to, we have to chip or select uh, chip one two times and each time uh, we're going to use potentiometer zero and then potentiometer one because that has two of the LEDs connected to it and set the uh, level to I and then we have to uh, turn off this chip select and turn on this chip select by active low and now we can communicate with register 0 or register 1 and also the two LEDs associated with it and increment them uh, slowly increasing uh, the value so that the intensity increases and we have a delay of 10 Then we have a delay of 300 and now what we do is we're going to increment the number I which is the 8-bit number determining the brightness and we're going to decrement it. So we're going to decrease and we're going to go from 128 to 0. So in this part of the loop the brightness is gradually going to increase and then once it reaches its maximum of 128 we'll have a little bit of a delay and the second part of the loop is it starts off at a level uh, of 128 and we s slowly decrement that to zero so in this part of the loop the, the intensity of the LED decreases and then it does it again where it increases the intensity and then it decreases the intensity in this loop so here we can see that sketch in action again we were varying the four potentiometers, gradually increasing the resistance, and then gradually decreasing the resistance. So here's a comparison with discrete components. You can see here I have a 220 ohm resistor and the 10K resistor, and I have the diode hooked to the wiper arm of this 10K resistor. So this is similar to the internal wiper arm on the digital potentiometer. So as this, as this wiper arm uh, starts to approach toward, uh, toward the 220 ohm resistor, it takes out less and less of this 10K resistor on the digipot 
it's about 7.5. Uh, it's not 10K exactly, but this results in an increased voltage across this diode. But the diode, after it reaches a certain breakdown voltage, has sort of an avalanche of current that flows through it and maintains about 1.7 volts across it. But as soon as that voltage increases, you just have an avalanche of current going through the diode, and the only limiting uh, resistance is this 220 ohms current limiting resistor. So right now the potentiometer is at 10K, so it's all the way clockwise, and you can see the voltage here across the diode. Also, if you look at the characteristic curve, for voltage, current versus voltage, you can see here that once it starts to get over 1.7 volts, the current really starts to take off. And at 1.9, it's already up to 30 milliamps. So this is the existing voltage across with, with the wiper arm at this end. And as the wiper arm approaches this end, so it takes out the 10K completely, you'll see the LED start to really uh, get bright. So now counterclockwise, and you can see the voltage is starting to increase, 1.8, and all of a sudden at 1.9, watch the LED, it really starts to take off, and now you've got two volts across the diode, the LED. So now we're at this this point here in the curve where we'll probably have about 30 milliamps or whatever uh, the 220 ohm resistor is limiting it to. So I hope this experiment gave you a bit better understanding of how to go about using a digipot or digital potentiometer and controlling it with the Arduino. So if you found this video interesting, please like, subscribe, and or comment. And thanks for watching.